Hi and welcome to my math class. Today we're doing a revision on all of the grade 11 trig graphs. Okay, when we are doing deductions, what you must remember is the basic deductions are what is the period, what is the amplitude, the range, the domain, but these things we had already discussed. Now, what else they can do is they can start giving you equations. If we take the following two graphs, when they ask us things like where is f of x equal to g of x, when they use the word equal, so when we're saying that one graph is equal to another graph, all they mean is where are the two graphs cutting each other. Now, it is a specific answer. It means you would say x is equal to this or x is equal to that. All deductions are usually linked to x. So when they give you deduction, they will always tell us, give us the x value of, and then they'll give you a question. So deductions revolve around the x values. You will see they never ask you deductions linked to the y value. So they'll say, give the value of x where f of x is equal to g of x, or give the x value where f of x is greater than g of x. So what you need to remember is, which one are we using? Now when they're using specifically equals to each other, it means at which points are the two graphs cutting? Now these values are very specific. So it's not running from one area to another. If you look, where are the two graphs cutting? It is cutting at minus 152 degrees and 0, 0,323. Then it's cutting again at minus 95. It's cutting again at 31, again at 116, and again, again at 164. So when they are asking you where is f of x equal to g of x, the answer is very specific. It is x is equal to minus 152 degrees. X is equal to minus 95 degrees. X is equal to 31 degrees. X is equal to 116 degrees. X is equal to 164 degrees. Now, if you look at this, the answers were X is equal to, it's not running from one point to another. So it's not a range of answers. Like if I would say, from year to year. That is a range of answers. It could be anything from minus 180 to 150. That's a range of answers. But when I want equal to its specific at that specific point. Now look how they're going to change the question. Now they're asking you where f of x minus g of x is smaller than zero. It is easier to put one on the one side and move the other to the other side. So what are they actually asking? They're asking you where f of x is smaller than g of x. Now when they ask for one value is smaller than the other, then what it means is one graph is on top and one graph is at the bottom. But this is not at a specific point. This answer could run like if you were having a parabola. Then the parabola is on top from this point till this point. Can you see? It's a range of answers. So you can't say um, x is equal to minus 4, or x is equal to 3, or x is equal to 1. It's running from one point to another. So when they give you an inequality sign, then your answer is ranging, which means that it becomes an inequality. Now let's look at the one we have. We want to know where f of x is smaller than g of x. So f of x is the green line and we're going to see where is f of x smaller than g of x, which means that the green line must be under the red line. Now if you look here, at this point the green line is on top, but look from here. Here the green line is at the bottom. And then again the green line is on top, but look at this point. What happens here? Here it starts that the green line is at the bottom. Can you see? And then again the green line is on top 
but at this specific point again the green line is at the bottom and then here it's on top but look here from here it's at the bottom so if f of x is smaller it means f of x is at the bottom now how do we give the answer how do we say this answer that's ranging from this minus 152 to minus 95 what you do is it is exactly how you had done inequalities if you remember when we had done the parabola of inequalities i had specifically showed you how to read these specific answers now what it means is x is usually in the middle of this so x is going to be bigger than minus 152 but smaller than 95. Now why am I not putting a line under? Because the question does not have a line under. If the question had a line under then my inequalities will also have a line under. But because my question doesn't have a line under my inequality doesn't. Now look at what we're doing. I'm putting an x here in the middle and then my symbol can you see it's always running in this direction it is read different it sounds different but it is written the same and then we have year one and we're going to have one year now how do we write it we know this one is running from one point to another but we're only interested in the x so my answer would be the first one it is running from minus 152 and where is it at? it's stopping at minus 95 let's do the next one can you see my symbol is the same pronounced differently but written the same look this means x is greater than minus 152 but smaller than minus 95 pronounced differently but written the same now this one what am i looking for i'm looking for the start at the specific point now what is the value at that point it's minus 45 so I know it's going to be from minus 45 and then till where is it going it is going till 31 can you see I'm only interested in x I'm not interested in the y values now let's do this one here so what do we have again we have x with our inequalities it is going from 99 till 116. Then our last one, it's going from here. We know that that value is 135 and it's going till 164. So we have X again. We got 135 till 164. So you must realize that when I have an inequality, my answer is also going to be an inequality. But when I have a specific equal to sign, then my answer is also going to be specific. If you look at the next style, the next style is where they say f of x times g of x is smaller than 0. Let's make it more interesting and make smaller and equal to 0. Now when they're giving you a multiplication, the multiplication is not exactly the same as the first one where we did an inequality. The answer is also an inequality, but whereas in this inequality, the first one we did where it was top and bottom, it was usually where they cut, where the two graphs cut, or where the two graphs met each other. You understand? Exactly linked to the first one. But when it's g of x times f of x this is a specific reference to where it cuts the x axis can you see the emphasis is not on where the two graphs meet but rather where at any point one of the graphs cut the x axis now the first thing you need to know is when i'm doing a multiplication i'm emphasizing on the x axis the second thing you need to know is that a plus and a plus give me a plus minus and plus give me a minus and a minus and a minus also equals to plus now if i want less than zero then that means i'm working where the two graphs have different signs now if i'm talking of the signs what am i referring to you see f of x and g of x refers to the y line 
So when I'm talking of the sign, I'm talking of specifically is the y positive or is the y negative? Can you see? So Now, let us look at the graph again. If you look at the graph, we are saying that this is positive and we are saying that the bottom part is negative. What am I emphasizing on? I am emphasizing where does it cut the x-axis. Look at this 150, it is cutting there. And then. If you go, remember, I'm not interested in one specific graph. I'm interested in any graph that's cutting the x-axis. At 150, there's another cut. Then at 90, we have another cut. Then if you look, we have a change at the asymptote. We have a cut at minus 30. Remember, I'm only interested in the x cuts, okay? Then we have a cut at 30. Then we have a cut at 45. We have another cut at 90. And then we have a cut at 150 and we have our asymptote. Now, the cuts are important. If you look, if you look, this graph till the cut is a positive. And the green graph, which is the f of x, is also positive. So, at this point, we have two positives. Can you see what I mean when I'm saying positive? If you look, the graph is above the Cartesian x-plane. And this graph is also above. Can you see? They're both on top. So, it's a positive and a positive. When I'm talking about on top, I mean, if you take this x-line, both the parts of the graph is on top. But now look, from this 150, this part is at the bottom and this part is on top. So the one is at the bottom of the yellow, the one is on the top of the yellow. Now if one is at the bottom of the yellow, it means I have a negative. And if one is on top of the yellow, it means I have a positive. So look, if we looked at the yellow line, then I had a positive and I had a positive. And then as soon as one swapped, now I am looking at the green. The green, the f of x is at the bottom which is a negative and the g of x is on top which is a positive. Then look, now the green is at the bottom and so is the red. Can you see they are both at the bottom? So both at the bottom means I have two negatives. Now look at the Next one, from minus 90, the green is on top, but the red is at the bottom. So, top means positive, bottom means negative. Then we have the asymptote. Now, we have this one is on top, but we also have the red because the red would have continued, it would have been on top. So, those are both positives. Then we have from minus 30, we have the green is at the bottom, but we have the red is on top. So at the bottom means negative, on the top means positive. And then again we have the swap, green is on the top and red is on the top, which is 2 positives. Then we have red at the bottom, green on the top. Red at the bottom, green on the top. If you continue this, you will see green is at the bottom, red is on the bottom also. Both are at the bottom, which means both are negative. Then from 135, we have the green at the bottom and we have the tan graph on the top. Now, 
If these are both at the bottom, we got a minus and a minus. From minus 135, we've got a negative, and then we've got a positive. Then we have, from 150, we have the red on the top, and we have the green on the top, which means we have two positives. Now let's look at the question again. It says, where is f of x times g of x smaller than 0? We know when it is smaller than 0, we need a plus and a minus. Now where is a plus and a minus? We have a plus and minus at this area. Here's another plus and minus, another one, another one, and another one. How do we write our answer? Remember, it's exactly the same with the same inequalities. But what are the x values? If we look at the x values, then for this specific row, the x value is between minus 150 and minus 135. Then let's go to the next negative one. The next negative one would be in this area, which is minus 90 to minus 45. Can you see? Minus 90 to minus 45. The next negative and positive is from minus 30 to 0. And then again, we have from 45 to 90. And our last one is from 135 to 150. Now notice, every time I'm giving an inequality, I'm going from the lowest to the highest, from the lowest to the highest. Even on this side, when I was going lowest to highest. So when we're giving the inequalities, you always go from lowest to highest. And the answers are always relevant to x, not y. So the three types of deductions we get is when it's an equal to, which is specific x values. Then where one graph is greater than another, that would be based on where they cut the two graphs. And when one times another is less or equal to zero, that is when they cut the x. X's. Thank you for watching.